This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. We're still on the uh, chapter on uh, the Black Skulls option pricing model, option pricing, uh, and I've written the formula up again for a call option. We've been through how to calculate the value of a call option. And you've got to agree with me, it's really down to calculator efficiency more than anything else. Um, you'll see, though, on the next page, I talk about the use of options. Now, I've already mentioned uh, one way you might use it. You know, uh, here's some shares. They're currently, oh, $2. Oops. Uh, I think the price is going to go up. And people do use options effectively for gambling. Because, you see, if I think the price is going to go up, and I think in a month's time, oh, it's going to be $5, then obviously what I could do is simply buy shares today at two, uh, wait a month or whatever period it is, uh, and if the price has gone up, sell them at five dollars, I've made a nice big profit. But of course to really make a lot of profit, I'd want to buy a lot of shares and that would take a lot of money. You know, oh, I'd love to buy a million shares Ooh, at two dollars, going up to five, I might make three million dollars profit. but a, I'd have to have two million money to buy the shares in the first place, and I don't. And secondly, even if I did have two million, I think the price is going to go up, but it might go down. And if it goes down, I could end up losing all two million. And so people who want to speculate on shares instead might buy options. Because, oh, maybe they could buy the option with an exercise price of... Um, Let's say three pounds, three dollars in three months' time. And maybe the premium that they have to pay is perhaps only 40 cents. So what I could do, instead of having to buy a million shares at two pounds in the hope of making three million profits and all that risk, I could say, oh. Let's buy a million options. If I buy a million options, that would only cost me 400,000, which I still haven't got, but obviously it's a lot less. I've then got the right to buy a million shares at $3. And if I'm right and the price goes up, then in three months' time, I buy a million shares at $3 and sell them at $5 and make two million profit. All right, I've paid a premium of 400,000. And if things go wrong and the price drops, ah, oh, well, it's only 400,000 I've lost. And so a lot of people in real life do use them effectively to gamble uh, because options cost a lot less than buying the shares themselves. However, financial managers shouldn't be gambling the company's money. Financial managers might use options for hedging. And what I mean here is something that you may find a bit odd, but suppose we currently already own some shares and the current value of them is $5. And we're worried there's a risk the share price might fall. I'm worried that the share price might fall to only $4 or something. We are going to sell them in the future. For some reason, we can't sell them now. I am going to sell them perhaps in three months' time. But I'm worried that the share price might fall. If the share price did fall, what would happen to the options price. Options are traded on the stock exchange from day to day. The price they charge, the premium, will change just like share prices change. And so, if the share price fell, think about it, in the formula is currently five dollars. Do, 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 do. And that gives today's option price. 
Now, if later the price is only $4, surely as that figure falls, the price of the options will fall as well. Price of options will fall. Now, I want to protect myself against the share price falling. Share price might fall. I might lose a dollar per share. What would be great is if I could, if the share price did fall, if I could actually make a profit out of options to cancel my loss. How can I make a profit out of the option price falling? You know, maybe today, uh, the options cost uh, 30 cents, and I've said, if the share price falls, they'll fall. Maybe, I'm making up figures obviously, they may only fall to, they may fall to 25 cents. If that happens, I've made a loss on the shares, how could I make a profit on options? Well, this you might find strange, but because they traded, you can actually sell options today, even though you haven't got anything to sell. You ring up the dealer and you say, sell me some options. The dealer will actually want you to give him some options at some stage. Well, you can buy back later. And it's a standard thing with shares as well that you can sell something you haven't got as long as you do buy it later. And so if the price did fall, the share price fell, falls, and I've lost money. But since the option price will fall as well, if I've sold today and buy back later at a lower price, ah, I'll make a profit on the options. And I'll show you shortly how we can make sure that the profit we make on the options exactly cancels the profit, the, the, the amount we might lose on the shares. That's called hedging risk. So although in, on its own the options are a gamble, uh, we're using the risk of the option price changing to cancel the risk of the share price changing. Now, I'll show you in a minute exactly how it works, because you could be asked the numbers. But I hope it's already clear that just as from day to day share prices do change, uh, so too the option price will change. Today, put in today's... Um, share price next week it'll be based on next week's share price and so on so as the share price changes so too does the option price uh, however uh, everything else could change as well the option price isn't solely affected by uh, the share price it's also affected by the time to expiry you know, check today, and there may be three months to expiry. T is 0.25. Now, come back in a month, and there's only two months left to expiry. T changes. That would affect the option price. Now, similarly, the risk free rate of interest might change, and if that changes, option price changes. Now, similarly, in arriving at um, D1 and D2, we use the standard deviation. That might change, and if that changes, the option price changes. The only things that are fixed, if you like, the exercise price isn't going to change. You know, that stays the same. Uh, and of course, E doesn't change. Uh, but otherwise, if any of the factors in the formulae change, uh, the option price changes. Now, dealers in options need to be conscious of that. And there are all sorts of formulae that they can use to help them deal with it, which you are not required for the exam. But you are required 
for written questions to have heard of what we call the Greeks. Uh, and they call the Greeks because we use uh, Greek letters. You can see below delta, theta, vega. Uh, <coughs> the ways, which although again you don't need the formulae, ways in which we can measure the effect of, on the option price of changes in the risk free rate of interest, the time to expiry, and so on. And if any of them change, option price changes, well, we can measure the effect. If this changes by so much, what will be the effect on the share, on the option price, and so on. Uh, and so, don't be worried about the numbers, but uh, do learn the words. First of all, delta, which is the only one that could be uh, numbers, which I'm about shortly to show you. Uh, delta is the rate at which the option price changes with the share price. I've already told you, as the share price changes, the option price would change. Now, I'll come back to that one, because that's the only one you could be expected to deal with. Uh, theta... Well, I said another factor that will change the option price is changes in the time to expiry. So theta, which begins with T, measures the rate at which the option price changes with the time to expiry. Uh, and as I've said twice, you can't be expected to do any numbers. There is a formula, it's not in the syllabus, it's irrelevant. But, remember the words, theta measures the effect of changes in the time. Uh, vega begins with V. Well, another factor in the D1, D2 formula which affects the option price is the standard deviation or the volatility. The standard deviation. Another factor that affects the option price, the premium. Uh, rho, where well, you can probably guess, it begins with R. Another factor in the formula is the risk free rate of interest. As R changes, so do with the option premium. And finally, although those three, I think, are easy enough to remember, theta, time, vega, volatility, rho, rate of uh, interest, uh, the last one is a bit odd. Gamma. It's weird. I'm certainly not going to do this particularly. Uh, it's the rate at which delta changes. Yeah. Uh, anyway, all of that is um, simply for written bits of questions, in case he mentions the Greeks, with the one exception of delta. Delta is one you could be expected to deal with. And I've said delta, look back at the formula in a minute. Delta is the rate at which the option premium will change as PA, the share price, changes. Now certainly in the very short term, in the short term, look at that formula. In the short term, well, PE is fixed. That's not going to change. And although e to the minus RT, uh, RT and the figures in D2 uh, can change, in the short term, they're going to stay the same. And if that all stayed the same, as PA changes, think about it. At the moment, uh, the share price may be 5. So the option price would be 5 times ND1 minus all this. If the share price changed to 6, 
the price of the call option would be six times MD1 minus all of that. If it changed to seven, it would be uh, call premium would be seven times MD1 minus all of that, and so on. And so as the share price changes, the rate of change uh, in the premium will be ND1. You see, if ND1 is 0.5, think about it. The premium is 6 times 0.5, minus all of that. If the share price goes to 7, the option premium is 7 times 0.5, minus all of that. So the share price has gone up by 1. The option price would go up by 1 times 0.5. So delta is ND1. The premium, as the share price changes, the change in the premium will be the change in the share price times ND1. And finally, we can make use of that in something called the delta hedge. So, uh, well, again, I will have a break, otherwise uh, I'm talking too long. But uh, our final lecture will actually work through a delta hedge. Very easy, as you'll see, and how we could use options to actually hedge against risk.